free speech is a principle. It isn't limited to the American First Amendment. It isn't limited to rights at all. It's, it's a principle that everyone should be able to have free and open discussion on topics, to say things that are offensive, hurtful, dissident, innovative, new, artistic, things that push boundaries, new ideas, and so that we can thrash them out and discuss them and figure out what works and what doesn't, what's a convincing argument and what isn't. It's a constant and ongoing societal negotiation to determine how we want to be, how we want to live, what our collective morality and ethics are what we consider to be acceptable, what we find to be true. There's bumps in the road, there's problems and difficulties. We're experiencing a lot of those now. Removing the gatekeepers of news has opened things up to everybody to express themselves and we have been flooded with conspiracy theories and nonsense. So we're having to relearn how to navigate to negotiate, to understand and to filter news and other information for ourselves, which is a valuable skill, which we all need to learn anyway. But the point is that free expression is this overriding principle, and the, the test of our principles is how we apply them to people that we don't agree with. Now, for quite some time, the political right, for want of a better term, has been riding this this free expression wave because socially they have been the ones being repressed and having the things that they want to say quashed and controlled by misapplied hate speech laws occasionally properly applied hate speech laws and, and all the rest of it so it becomes very difficult for them to express their point of view and a lot of centrist people, a lot of genuinely liberal people, a lot of genuinely left-wing people agree that people should be able to have free expression. Where people draw the line yeah, it varies, but a lot of them agree with the right, that the right should be able to express their point of view, to thrash it out, to have it discussed, to have it destroyed. These are people with the courage of their convictions who believe, know in their heart of hearts, that they can win the argument on the facts and the rhetoric, which the, the two unfortunately don't necessarily always go together. And they have been opposed by a far left, though I wouldn't genuinely consider them to be left, authoritarian repressive force that wants to enforce speech codes, deplatform, riot when, when people they don't like are engaged to speak, all the rest of it. So the right had hitched to this wagon for a long time and had fallen in with the with the free speech people. But then that seems to have shifted as, as power has shifted, as the social zeitgeist has shifted. We now find both left and right engaged in attempts to censor, to control and to, and to prevent. And the arguments are usually pretty disingenuous on both sides, but as soon as someone gets a sniff of either social or political power, they seem to forget their previous commitment to free speech. I mean, the left couldn't have arisen in the 60s and 70s without the, the Berkeley push for free speech, uh, without that, that culture around the world, without a loosening of what we consider to be acceptable and moral and, and okay and what was fine for consenting adults to engage in. And equally, this pushback against the extreme left couldn't have happened without pushes for, for free speech, for the internet, and, and all the rest of it. And yet we seem mired in controversy after controversy as one side after another claims to be victimised because being a victim has power. But the principle is and should be overriding any political affiliation that everyone should be free to express and discuss their ideas, even hateful ones. The line for me, and I think it should be the line for everyone, is the point of harm. But with this right, this right to free expression, also comes responsibility. I mean, you don't have to use it in a constructive way. You can abuse it. You still have that right. You know, you can still shout people down and, and whatever else. You can use the heckler's veto. These are all 
expressions of free speech, though they're curbing other people's, it'd be better to just speak. But, you know, you can abuse it, but, but should you? When you engage in a discussion, shouldn't you enter it honestly with the goal of either changing the other person's mind or demonstrating the worth and value of your ideas to the audience? You know, you should be seeking to convince, not just shout down and, and, and poo-poo and so on. I mean, we're all guilty of doing that. I can be quite dismissive uh, in my atheistic arguments against religious people. It depends how patient <laughs> I'm being. But my goal is always to try and reach someone to make them think, whether it's by challenging them in such a way that they must defend the indefensible or getting their back up in some way or, or, or ridiculing what they believe. You know, the goal is still the same. And other times I can have calm and collected discussions and that's that's the aim a lot of the time but I don't think they should be censored or prevented from expressing their point of view indoctrination is a different matter that's harmful but they should be free to express their ideas and I should be free to blaspheme to tear those ideas down but too often I'm finding even in the communities here online that have such strong commitments to free speech, that it's not being used in a constructive and useful way, it's not being used to support the marketplace of ideas, it's just being used to fight, to try and hush up the other person. You know, when I critique Jordan Peterson, I mean Jordan Peterson's fans, a huge part of what they are supposedly about is free speech, the, the right to say things, even difficult, even insulting, even offensive things. And yet, most of the counter-criticism counter had no real content to it. As little semantic content as Peterson's <laughs> talks themselves. Ow. Um, so that was uh, disappointing. You know, these are people who supposedly believe in the value of free speech and the value of dialectic, all, all the rest of it, and yet... Dismissive, downvotes, brigading, insults all the rest of it. And it's the same thing with guns. You know, I, I specifically said, you know, these are just my ideas as an outsider, a view from the rest of the world. And even if you're pro-gun, you know, if you had to do something, what would be acceptable to you? What would be the right thing to do? And the pushback I got, again, was the same kind of dismissive stuff, the gun fan apologia, which frankly is, is rather similar to creationist apologia in a lot of ways, just as unscientific and all the rest. But you know, I, I didn't want to get into those arguments, I wanted to hear what your solutions were, even if we were on opposing sides, and hardly anyone really did that across social media, and that's, that's unfortunate. You know, this is what free expression is for, for the exchange of ideas, the discussion, the, the trying to persuade each other. And even people who say that they are committed to the value of free expression are unwilling to do that. So I guess this is an appeal to, at least in the short term after you've seen this video, make more of an effort to engage with people in, in good faith and try to persuade and show what you think rather than just trying to shut people up or, or beat them down. And that whole internet blood sports thing is an example of where this has all gone wrong, I think. Zang. Old Fat Punks is part caper, part comedy, part nostalgia and part commentary. It follows three ageing punks as they build themselves up for one big, nihilistic last hurrah. You can buy Old Fat Punks at Amazon, Drive Through Fiction or Lulu.com. Follow the links below or search on those sites.